How's it going guys? Angus here from Makey's Views and in today's video we are checking out the Malian M150 which was graciously sent to me by Hobby King. So this is an i3 style design 3D printer and it might look a bit familiar to some of you because it has very similar features to the original Wanhao duplicator i3 which I reviewed last year. And that's no coincidence, this is a clone of the original Wanhao duplicator i3 made in a different factory. It might look like a rebrand, but actually this is an entirely different machine which is sold by Hobby King and it's also pretty cheap. So, is it any good? Is it like the original one? Is it better? Is it worse? Better watch to find out. Welcome back guys. So the Malian M150 sports a build volume of 200 by 200 by 180 millimeters, exactly the same as the Wanhao i3. And it has a heated platform with a Mark 10 style extruder that takes 1.75 millimeter filament. The frame design is completely sheet metal and it's actually quite rigid, which is, which is quite appreciative in a 3D printer of this size and this price point. And currently that price point is $373 from the International Warehouse plus shipping. So that's pretty cheap for a printer of this size. Another trait inherited from the Wanhao i3 is this external uh, control power supply box, which is connected to the printer via a like umbilical cord of wires. I've never really been a fan of this. It's always difficult to transport this printer around without worrying about breaking wires. But I did appreciate that when it did come out of the box, there was very clear instructions to plug everything in place and I didn't have any issue getting it up and running. You do have to put the gantry in place by screwing in four screws and it does come with Allen keys that are too short to do it comfortably. So you need to either do it and then um, pull them out and put them back in and turn it maybe half a turn or just get some longer Allen keys and save yourself the pain. The LCD interface is a fairly unattractive backlit yellow and brown affair but it does have fairly decent contrast so you can actually read it while having a fairly steep viewing angle which was a big issue on the previous generation of the Wanhao i3 version 1 which had a similar design with a 90 degrees for the LCD but the LCD was a different type and it had a very poor viewing angle. This is actually fairly easy to view when you're standing up and looking at it on a desk but still it would be preferable to have it at an angle. The encoder wheel is okay, the, it, it's not coded properly to the firmware so you, you sometimes have to have one or two or even three clicks to click through the menus and I also found selecting things because of the refresh rate can be hit and miss. You sometimes have to hit it a couple of times or hold it down to select options within the menu. You print to the machine either by tethering it to a computer via USB, which is something I never really recommend because if the computer dies or goes to sleep, then your print dies. But the recommended way of printing would be via the SD card. And uh, I thought I'd have enough of this, but it has a micro SD card in the side here, which is fine. Slicing to a micro SD card is not a problem, but it has the same issue as the earlier Wanhao i3. Again, it's a clone, so they've cloned some of the bad, bad features of it as well. And that is getting the micro SD into the side. You have to physically push it in. Difficult. It's quite difficult with your thumbnail because it doesn't stick out enough to get it easily. It's actually sort of in the body of the, the control box, which makes it quite difficult to load and unload to get different models on, onto the printer. So I do recommend if you can find a micro SD to standard SD adapter, I think that will save you a lot of grief using this machine. And once you do that, it makes it very easy to add files via the SD card. The machine comes with a few sheets of this yellow painter's tape. And I, I always find with this sort of painter's tape surface, you get maybe two or three prints off it and then you rip some of it. You either rip it with a spatula it comes with or something like that and you have to put new tape on. So I highly recommend grabbing some build tack or fake build tack, whatever you want to whatever you want to use, something a little bit more durable and putting it on. Also, a lot of people are putting glass beds on these style of machines and I haven't done it myself, but it does seem to work quite well for PLA printing and it's very level. So if you want to go with glass, it's definitely a worthy upgrade. Just make sure you change the micro switch level so it allows for the extra thickness and you can do it on this machine. There is two levels to move the Z micro switch. But there is actually a few fairly major improvements on this machine to the aforementioned Wanhao i3 version 1. First, and most notably, is the belt doesn't rub. I mean, belts shouldn't ever rub on things. First place, you know, full stop, it's terrible machine design. This machine has the belts in a clear path. They do not rub on anything, which is fantastic. But to do this, they've had to use smaller 
idler wheels which have very small bearings and a big issue with the batch a while ago and my machine was part of that batch was that the bearings they used were too poor quality and they seized up. This has been fixed so Hobby King and Malian are listening and the updated idler pulleys are much more robust. They have a Teflon bushing on a smooth rod which will be much more durable and much more suitable for a machine like this. Another thing I can appreciate after having used machines like this in the past is they've made it very easy to access the grub screws that hold the linear rods in place. And there has been reports of some other machines from other manufacturers being shipped with these rods just loosely put in place but no grub screws. So if the machine gets bumped in transit they can pop free. But these are actually, these have grub screws and the sheet metal has been designed to let you access them. And I can really appreciate that move. So although it's a clone, there is clear differences that show it's been made in a different factory and that some thoughts gone into the actual serviceability and assembly of this 3D printer. I also highly appreciate the use of plugs on the extruder end. So there is plugs for the stepper motor, there's plugs for the thermistor, the heat tube, the fans, everything has plugs. No fiddly crimps at all because that was a big issue in some other machines. They would break, they'd be difficult to fix. Here you have plugs so you can disconnect anything you need and take it away and put spares in. That's a huge improvement in my opinion. It makes the machine much easier to service should you need to replace something. Now onto a few other gripes. In terms of homing the machine, it homes fine into the 000 point here in the corner. But if you go to zero point on the Z direction and then want to obviously maybe you want to change filament, you want to raise it up. You're trying to figure out should you turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise to raise it up. And the problem is if you turn it the wrong way, it will try to jog down into the bed. There is no, the firmware won't restrict you from going beyond home. And that's terrible in these designs because you have two stepper motors on the Z axis. So if it tries to jog into one corner, they're going to jog out of square and it's going to be un unlevel, which is a really annoying thing to fix. You need to go in with a ruler and have the machine off and tweak them each time to get it level. Then your bed's going to be neat re-leveling as well. So I went as far as to actually draw plus and minus on the control panel so I could remember every time I did it so I wouldn't jog it into the bed. And I would recommend getting a firmware update to fix that yourself so it doesn't jog into the bed. And something that was pointed out by my buddy Tom over at his channel when he reviewed the M150, something I haven't personally tested on my unit is the thermal runaway that could occur should your thermistor pull free. I'll link to his video in the description if you want to check out his review of the Malian M150, but that is a serious safety concern and something I would definitely look into if you're looking to use the machine long term without direct supervision. And also something that seems to be common with all these machines is the power supply cooling fan is really loud and annoying. Like I'll turn it on here just to show you how loud it is. Okay, so now let's get to the print quality. How does this machine actually print? Well, like I mentioned, the extruder does seem to have a little bit of an under extrusion problem. But again, that might be my slicing settings within Simplify 3D because there was no profile for the M150. So I pretty much just copied the Wanhao Duplicator i3's profile and then started tweaking from there. So my first few prints were the, the Maker's Muse torture test. Once again, I've completely broken off those, those little rods. The bridging worked very well. The peak's actually nice, so the cooling is actually quite decent. This is, again, Hobby King's own brand of orange PLA. The thin wall worked well. Again, this is the slicer allowing this to be printed, but the thin walls worked well. And what I was very impressed with was the overhang here at 45 degrees. It actually did that very nicely as well. I also decided to try printing this Daedric Dagger. I'd ripped this file from Skyrim ages ago, years ago. And it printed this very well as well. And it was a good test of support material to see if the support would pull away. And it did. Support pulled away as well. So both the Hobby King filament and the M150 worked quite well together. Next I moved on to this filament, which is the color changing. Uh, it's like a black gray to a white. And I printed out this Maker Coin. So this is a little bit more complicated than my normal Maker Coin because it's got this crazy hollow inside. And I printed that with no supports. And the overall quality is decent. It was printed at 200 microns, and again, there's a few artifacts. It's not the best print I've ever seen, but for the price point, it's definitely nothing to sniff at. And then finally, I tried some practical parts. So this is a part for a 3D printer design I designed ages ago and then never made. And here I was testing support material to see if the support would pull away, which it does quite nicely. Although you do have to be careful with PLA supports, they can sometimes 
uh, cause you great injury. <laughs> so I would recommend wearing gloves to break it away. But with this part, I'll show you a close up. You can definitely see the under extrusion around the edges where it's done a short fill. So it's done a retract and then it hasn't quite caught up to fill before it's done that path. The part is also nice and dimensionally stable and accurate. There's no obvious Z deviation, which can be a problem with i3 style designs. It actually looks really quite sharp and actually possibly even sharper than my previous uh, Wang Hao i3 version one. So conclusion time on the Malian M150. Do I recommend this 3D printer? Well, for the price point, it's actually one of the cheapest metal frame 3D printers you can buy that's ready to run. But at the same time, there's a lot of things I, I'm left wanting with a lot of features here. I would like it to come with the ability to not go beyond its home limits. And also I'd like it to have slightly better accessibility for the SD card, stuff like that. But they're very small issues and definitely things that can be worked around and improved on. So when I came to the conclusion with the original one, how I said it was a tinkerer's dream, I would say this has picked up that title. The M150 is a fantastic deal if you're keen to get something that works, but then needs a little bit of love to get printing to the best of its capabilities. I would say that's what this machine is. You can tinker with it, you can improve it. It does print out of the box, but you can get amazing prints with it if you want to work a little bit harder to improve it. And yet there is great mods on the internet for the, the entire Wanhao i3 line and other i3 designs that will perfectly fit onto the M150 because it is such a perfect clone. Uh, that will, like, there's Z-axis stiffeners that will work perfectly. There's various filament holder adjustment uh, modifications you can print. And there's various cooling adjustments and cooling improvements you can 3D print and fit to this printer. Also worth noting that because it's got the same extruder mount, you'll be able to mount aftermarket extruders to this design like the Flexion for printing flexible materials. So that's going to do it guys for the Malian M150 review here on Maker's Muse and a huge thanks to Hobby King sitting through this machine so I could check it out. It's also worth mentioning that Hobby King have been great for my feedback. I have been feeding back everything I've found about this machine to them and they've been fantastic noting it down and they were very very quick to resolve the, the idler bearing issue and the factory was very quick to upgrade their bearings to a Teflon bushing instead of a small ball bearing. So definitely great that that kind of thing is working and machines are being improved on. And that's something I like to see from manufacturers of technology where they don't just make a model and be like, that's it, that's on the market, it's done. Whatever's wrong with it, we don't care, it's on the market. They're actually iteratively improving this machine based on feedback from users like myself and that's good to see. So if you enjoyed this video here and make some use guys and want to see future 3D printing reviews, tips and tricks, tutorials and projects, hit that subscribe button, helps me out a huge amount. And also I currently have my 25,000 subscriber giveaway going on. So as a huge thanks to you guys, we are giving away some 3D printers. You can check that link in the video description. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later guys, bye. Actually, blocked in space.